I'm Dr Samantha Allen, Executive Manager of Emergency Preparedness and Response Services at Animal Health Australia and with me today is Sharon Starrick, our incoming Chair for Animal Health Australia and Sharon is also a grains and pork producer from South Australia and together today we want to talk to you about African swine fever and biosecurity. So Sharon, you may not know, but before I joined Animal Health Australia, I worked in government and had a lot of experience in emergency response, both exotic diseases and endemic diseases. So I really think I have a good feel for how producers must be worried at the moment about the African swine fever threat. Um, as a pork producer, could you maybe tell us a little bit about the things that you've been doing on your family farm to protect your property against disease? So firstly, Sam, I'd say that biosecurity is the responsibility of everybody not only governments, but also pork producers themselves. Mm. As part of our quality assurance program, mm. we included biosecurity as part of our program. But in recent weeks, we've actually revisited our biosecurity plan, mm. knowing now what we know about African swine fever and some of the risks that come with African swine fever. So we've focused on things like the movement of people onto mm -hmm. the property and really looked at ways of making sure that only essential people mm -hmm. go anywhere near the piggery. Um, we've also looked at the movement of vehicles, so making sure that when vehicles come onto the property, they're clean, and when they leave the property, they're also clean. Mm -hmm. We're also looking at working with our feed suppliers to make sure that um, packaging and ingredients that come mm -hmm. Um, onto our property are clean and not coming from countries that might be contaminated or have African swine fever. Mm. Now Sharon, it's also really important that pigs are fed the correct food. Did you want to share anything um, about that? Yeah, it's really important, Sam, that pigs are not given um, food that contains any meat products or mm. that has been in contact with meat. Um, not only is it illegal, but it can actually make the pigs sick. And that is a, a way that African swine fever can actually be transmitted as well, in, uh, which has happened in other countries. Yes, that's right. Um, as Sharon said, African swine fever, um, food products can be infected and be perfectly safe for a human to eat. They don't look or smell off. Um, and so that is one of the highest risk ways that the disease could enter the country. If it's brought in illegally in food and then if that food finds its way into a pig's mouth, um, it could be the way that the disease starts. Absolutely. Mm. Um, well, Sharon, I know that feral pigs are a problem in a lot of areas of Australia. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the measures you've taken to protect your pigs against feral so Sam, whilst feral pigs aren't a problem in our particular area mm -hmm. around near our herd, they are a problem in around in some parts of Australia mm -hmm. where there are commercial piggeries. So some of the types of measures that producers can take is really to fence off their farms to make sure that feral pigs aren't coming into contact with their commercial herds. The other things that producers can do are look at management practices for the management and control of feral pigs by working with their neighbours mm -hmm. and their wider community about the management of feral pigs. Well thanks so much for joining us today Sharon, there's been some really great hints and tips there. Um, and I guess just to close we'd like to remind everybody about the emergency disease hotline number. Please call it if you see anything unusual or you're concerned at all and the number is one eight hundred six seven five triple eight.